Welcome to the ByWords Show. I'm your host, Hannah Hughes. ByWords is all about equipping women for purposeful living by starting conversations, celebrating stories, and inspiring faith. In a world that applauds the hustle, I'm here to help you break free from the lies and come back to what really matters. It's time to get real, get rooted in truth, and come alive in relationship with Jesus so you can show up to each day with intention and confidence no matter where you're at in your story. Here we believe that embracing our stories brings hope, healing, and purpose to the process, and sharing our stories helps others do the same. Whether you're looking for a midweek faith refresh, practical tools for pursuing your dreams, or just need some good old-fashioned girl talk, you're in the right place. Grab your latte and let's dive in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the By Word Show. Today is the day. I'm so glad you're here. And we are going to be talking about something juicy today, y'all. Okay, we've got Stephanie Gass with us here. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. Well, I am so pumped to have you here. So excited to have this conversation. You guys, today we're going to be talking about the pressure that we feel to show up and be Instagram worthy. And wow. y'all know, we hear it all the time. Instagram's the devil. Social media is the worst. We've got this yeah. love-hate relationship with social media going on. But I am really passionate about the fact that it can be a tool. We can use it to be a light. And I just thought it, Steph would be the perfect person to touch on this because you've done this so well. So as we get started, would you just kind of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do for those who don't know you yet? Sure. So like Hannah mentioned, I'm Stephanie Gass, and I teach women of faith really how to get clear on what they're called to do so that they can ultimately create their thing out of it, whether that be in marketplace or in ministry. We all feel like we have something that we're called to do. And so I help them figure out that thing. And then start a podcast to actually grow an audience around that thing that they're called to do. And then ultimately monetize that podcast through coaching or a course offer. I'm also a mama. I've got a 10-year-old little boy and a 7-year-old little boy and a boy dog. And I'm married. So it's like I've got all the testosterone over here. We live in, we live in New Mexico. So we put chili on everything, which is a weird thing if you've never been Love to it. New Mexico. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of me in a nutshell and what I do. I love it. Well, I love watching the way that you do your business, the way that you have really built this online presence and, and platform that you've turned into a business. And you're helping so many other women process through this as well. And like I was mentioning, so many people have mixed feelings about social media. I'm sure you've heard it all, <laughs> especially as a business coach. So what has it been like for you navigating the world of online business, like going against the grain of hustle culture and getting caught up in algorithms and this pressure that we sometimes feel to be perfectly curated? Yeah, well, man, it was a really long uh, journey for me and me and social media go way back. So I grew a really successful network marketing business. That was my first like go in this entrepreneurial space. And I did it on social media. I did it on Facebook back then. And it was fine until it wasn't, you know, like I was making a lot of money, getting all the leads, doing the DM game, all of those things, getting a lot of sales, growing my team. But it was at the detriment of all these other things, you know, being present with my kids and having a healthy mindset. Like I really, truly was addicted to the the apps. And it it really started leading into when Instagram started getting super hot. And I was trying to figure out like how to grow. And I was kind of transitioning out of network marketing into the coaching space at that point. That was like 2016, 17. And so I was spending like five hours a day on Instagram. Like we've got to create content. I've got to post stories. I have to comment back to people. We're DMing. Like this was the method of growth that I thought that I really needed to focus on. And, you know, it worked. I have air quotes. We had, you know, a thousand likes per post, 500 story views. I got to 40,000 followers excruciatingly, right? And I, at this, at the same time, you know, started to really feel super convicted in my spiritual life. Like God was really showing me that I was idolizing different things in my life. Like he had already started working on freeing me from alcohol and he had started working on freeing me from these other things. And I have an addictive personality. So I'm like, cool, but like, I'll just hold on to this business thing because that makes me feel like I'm doing something well. And so while I'm going through all these personal things that God's like freeing me of this and I'm working on this and I'm, 
you know, learning how to like pray and like hear from him. I'm coveting the business thing going like, but this is mine. Like, I don't believe you that there's an easier way to do this. And so I just kept holding it and holding it. And I remember this day, everybody was talking about like what they were going to fast. I don't remember if it was Lent or what was going on, but I said, okay, well, I'll get off of Instagram because I had been for like three years before this, Hannah, deleting the apps off my phone on the weekends. And it had been really great. Like I had told my audience about it. Everybody was doing it with me. We all talked about how great we felt on the weekends when we didn't have the apps. And, but we come back and turn them back on because we thought like we have to be here. Like you said, like, but, but don't we have to be here to like be the light or like have this presence? And so those were these things that I believed to be true. And I think for some people they are. But for me in that time, like I would still go on there and be there for way too many hours, right? There was no, let me turn on the the time block on my phone and like actually be done. I would just ignore it. And I would go back on there. Like I couldn't, there were no boundary that I was, it, that was working because, and it's been proven scientifically now that, you know, the highest paid engineers in the world are working to create an addiction. We're creating a, that loop in our brain, right? Where we're like, oh, I'm going to get a hit. That feels good. Swipe, click, swipe, click. And so like I would find myself reaching for my phone on the weekends when I didn't even have the apps installed and I knew I had a problem, right? Like if I can't not touch my phone, I have a problem. Like I don't want to want to touch my phone every single minute. And so I lay down Instagram for a month and this was terrifying because we were right at the point of like the podcast was really growing. I think I had like passed my first one or 200K in revenue and I felt like it's coming from Instagram. Like, look at the likes, look at the comments. Like, yeah. this is working. Yeah. But I felt so convicted that God's like, is it? Like, is that really what's working for you? And so laid it down. I told everybody on the podcast about it. And I said, let's do a test. We'll do the social media experiment. And we'll write down all the metrics. And we'll see if I am off of Instagram as a complete company, like nobody posts, nobody touches it. I don't go there. What happens? Well, a month went by. And more importantly than what happened to my business, I was free. I was like light. I had all this visionary ideas again. I'm like, oh, I could do this. I had time. I went, I added another podcast episode per week. Like I had, I just had time. I had my, my, like my sanity back. Right. And I didn't realize what a handicap that app had been in my life for years and how much of a veil it was putting over my eyes in all these areas of my life. Everything had to be looked through the Instagram lens. Do I capture this? Do I capture this? Should I, like, it was like constantly this thing like yeah. nagging at me like a drug addiction, right? And so after that month, the business, everything grew. Email list, podcast downloads, revenue. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, let's keep it going. So we stayed off for six months as a company, like as a whole. Wow. And then I never went back. And it's been it's been almost two years now that I do not use the platform personally. And my company doesn't post on it either, which is crazy to think about. And we've, we've you know, we're a seven-figure business. And it's like, how is that possible when everybody says it's something that you have to have? And I think to bring this full circle, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. But to bring this full circle, like, it's about what God has for you, right? And it's about personal conviction. It's not about what is everybody else doing? So therefore I must do blank. It's not about, oh, well, I should be there because I have to have a company presence. Says who? Like what data is supporting the fact that we have to be anywhere, that we have to show up in a certain way anywhere? And so for me, I've really taken this really strange approach to business that's really unorthodox in our industry, which is like, I now follow my, I follow my people. Like, where did you guys find me? Why did you find me there? What did I say? And like reverse engineering from the sale backwards instead of like, let me be everywhere and hope for the best. Hey, why are you spending money with me? Where did you come from? And we found that 95% of my leads came directly from the podcast. And the other 5% were spread from, you know, sure, Pinterest or a social media, whatever. But it was like, if that is the case, why am I spending 15 hours a week on all this other stuff when my podcast takes me two hours? 
And that's when this big, huge paradigm shift happened in my life around how I grow and what I was called to teach other women to do. That's amazing. Yeah. So much in there that's just so, well, you said it's like freeing. It's so easy when we are in social media and we are just like, it is just constant pressure voices telling us you need to be on this platform. You need to be on this platform. You need to be posting this many times a day. You have to make this kind of content if you want to grow your platform. And then if you want to make money, you got to do this, 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 this. You got to post every day, no breaks to keep up, you know, and it is just overwhelming. Like I cannot even count the amount of women who have told me that they feel burnt out from that. I'm sure you have talked to so many people as well who just feel the exhaustion of trying to keep up with an algorithm that's always changing, trying to chase down their audience, their community, their clients. It's just, it's hard. But I love that you said when you took a break, it was so freeing. It lifted that veil Mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. And then for you, it gave you the clarity of like, is this what I even need to be doing? Is this where my people even are? And then also the faith aspect of trusting God for your success, not feeling like you have to stay on the hamster wheel of chasing (laughs) the algorithm for success. And so I would just love to know, like, what was it like for you in your faith process as you started realizing, okay, maybe this, maybe I don't have to do all of these things and be all of these places in order to be successful in what God is calling specifically me to do? Yeah. You know, I think that we feel like faith has to be so hard, you know, like, oh man, like I'm going to trust God and I'm going to do all these things. And like, this is going to be like this whole thing. And I'm going to just like find two hours for morning time. And I'm going to do this. And then like, when I finally grow in my spiritual growth, like he'll free me from this. It's like, Our God wants this to be, from my experience, like so free and light and peaceful and joyful. And like when we stop clutching everything, like we clutch every addiction. And I don't care if you don't have a business, what's it for you, right? Like, is it food? Is it alcohol? Is it social media? Is it comparison? Is it your body? Is it your relationship? Is it money? Like what's the story that is holding you captive? that you're unwilling to relinquish. And so when I finally was like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then like, okay, God, right? Like, take it. Like, I have to trust that if I feel convicted about something, his way is going to prove more fruitful than my fear about letting that thing go. And so when I let that go, It was almost immediate, like how I felt and like the freedoms and the things that were like lifting off and breaking off in my life. And like the people, like I immediately sensed a huge shift in my my life. And that's when it was like this thing swapped in my mind around like, oh, like God's standing next to me. I, I envision him like standing next to me with a gift. And he's got this gift and he's just waiting for me to go, I'm ready. Like, hand me the gift. But I'm over here like, I don't want the gift, God. I feel like maybe what I'm working on might be better than what you have. Like, just hold it a little bit longer. But that's got to be really hard to unwrap. I don't know what's inside. I'm afraid of what you're going to hand me. Like, that's what we're doing when we're gripping the stuff, right? All the stuff, whatever that is. And so now I'm like, my constant prayer is like, God, whatever I'm gripping, like, like open my hands. Like, show me. Help me. Like, I don't want to be idolizing anything in my life because what you have is better. Like purify my heart, cleanse my heart, help me to be more compassionate, like free me from all these things. Because now I realize I want the gift and I want it as soon as he's ready to hand it to me. I'm like, let's go, God. Because my life now is like, I work way less. It's so much more peaceful. It's so much more freeing. I'm so present with my kids. I don't feel the urge to touch my phone every five seconds. Like freedom is available But we have to understand that it can be, it's going to be easy, but it all comes back to our relinquishing control. And that's the hardest part. Yeah. I love how you mentioned the presence piece because I feel like, honestly, that's one of the biggest things social media and, I mean, our phones and devices in general rob from us. They just take away so much from being in the moment. And 
actually being aware of how much we have around us. And you mentioned already, like the comparison thing. It's so easy to get sucked into that or materialism and feeling like we need more. We need to be better. We need to change this and that in our lives or our house needs to look perfect. We need to look perfect. And I was talking with my husband about this not too long ago about it's so crazy how much our world is so saturated with social media. Like everything yeah. is in social media. That's just our world yes. now. And it's crazy uh -huh. now that we are parents that our kids are going to grow up watching uh -huh. us on our phones, yeah. making content. I was talking to him about like, I, yeah. I make social media content, you know? And I was like, yeah. how weird is it that my kid's experience is going to be like, oh, mom's making a reel, you know, like I that's know. so weird. <laughs> it's so it weird, weird to think about that. But I love that you mentioned how you now have what I feel like God wants for all of us is to have the freedom in our lives to mm. focus on the things that matter most run a successful business, run, you know, like whatever he's calling you to doing it well, mm -hmm. doing it with excellence yeah. and being present for your life and not yeah. getting so caught up in the hustle that you miss what really matters on the journey. So I would love to know, like maybe some of the boundaries you have set. I know you said now you're wow. not on social media anymore, but even when you were, you talked about being off of it on weekends. Are there yeah. kind of things like that you would recommend to people who still feel like they want to utilize social media sure. to create content? Yeah. And this is by no means to like bash anybody who does want to be there. I think it's a, every unique situation is between you and God. And so some of you will feel really convicted by what I say. And some of you will feel the opposite and you may even get upset. Like, and that's all normal. I think that it's take always take what somebody says, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Like what's for you in anything that anyone says. But also be aware, like when you feel resistance creep up, look at it. Why do I feel resistance creep up when this person says this thing? It's usually because there's some type of truth or discernment that does need to be addressed in that. So for me, you know, if this would have been me listening to this a long time ago, I'd have been like, well, she dumb because I'm going to be on social media because that's <laughs> how I grow my business. But what we did is like, let's tiptoe into something that we're curious about, right? So if there's curiosity here, like where I started was I just deleted Facebook and Instagram, whatever you guys are on. Like, I know there's all kinds now. I don't do TikTok. I don't do any of it. Like, I can't. It's just, it's not healthy for me. But if you're on any of those, like, how can you just delete that completely from your life on the weekends? That was a great place to start. I lived like that for three years. That's all I could handle. It was like, let me just tiptoe into this thing just so I can experience what my life is like without this ever nagging presence, you know? And it was great and it was so fruitful for me. And even if I had just continued that forever, it would have been better than the former, you know? So that would be a great first thing. The other boundaries that I have are like, they're specific to the phone itself, right? Because what social media does is it just trains us for the dopamine hit. So we can go get the dopamine hit in a lot of different ways. Like we can, I you know, I'm guilty of like, let me replace what used to be social media, with like YouTube. Like, what do I want to watch on YouTube right now? Or like, what's the news? What's going on in the news? So I have to be really careful around phone in general. So what it looks like for me is around like 5.30 to 6 o'clock when it's like, I'm really trying my best to be present with my kids go to full-time school, which is they're older now. So that is something to like, your season of your life is something to consider too. My husband's home. Like I put my phone on this shelf that's by our coffee maker and I, I'm shelving it. Like phone is shelved. I don't bring it to the table. I don't like, unless I absolutely must look something up or call somebody back, I shelf it. And then I can pick it back up at like nine. I'll do like 30 minutes just because I enjoy it of like the YouTubing or the browsing before bed. Like I know you're not supposed to do that before bed, but it's fine. <laughs> you find your happy space. Okay, that's my happy place. Or like if I'm in the bath, I'll want to scroll. That's fine. But it's so like strategic. It's not like this is going to be an ever-present thing in my hand. I don't want that for my life. I don't want it for my kids to see me that way. And I know that true leadership begins with making the change within yourself. We cannot speak life into our kids. We must speak life and show and display life. And those are the things that are going to permeate into their little souls and into their eyes and their ears and create their reality. And I don't want for my kids what's been so hard for me, like to be unavailable for that. So those boundaries are some that have been really life-changing. I also, I'm so serious about notifications. They're all off. 
zero notifications on my phone. So I actually don't even know if you've texted me unless I look at the phone. My husband gets so mad, but I'm like, I can't. Like, I can't be dinging and pinging all day because it stresses me out. And now I'm touching my phone again. Like, I just can't be a high, you know, highly operational CEO, mom, healthy person who works out and makes time for God, like, unless I'm running my day. This phone running my day is stealing from me. It's stealing from the God vision, the God crafted life that is available. And that's dumb. And I'm not here for it. And so I'm really serious about those things, notifications, the boundaries. And then for me, Instagram is completely uninstalled. Facebook is completely uninstalled. If I need to go on Facebook, I use the computer because it really forces me to like, am I in a work block right now? Like, why am I going on here? Because I have something to post because I have something to do. I need to check our students' work or whatever it is. So those are some boundaries that have been really great for me. That's awesome. That's really huge because I feel like there probably are so many people listening thinking, oh, I could never do that. Like I could never put my phone down, you know, and there have been times actually at the beginning of this year I did or January 2023, I did this devotional that was redeeming your phone time. Super cool. You guys, I've probably talked about it multiple times on the show by now, but it the one of the first things it has you do is check your screen time. Oh, it's so sad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It will humble you so fast. It's wild because the thing is, and I hear this a lot from women who want to start a business or moms who want to like make time, you know, whatever season of life it is. And this was me feeling like, oh, I don't have time. Like I want to do all this stuff. And then I saw my screen time and I was like, oh, wow, look how much time I have. Almost enough for a full-time job spent on my phone. Honestly, it is. It's It's shocking. shocking. It's so shocking. shocking. It's crazy. It really is. And so I just know, like, if you're listening and you're like, there's no way, like, I could ever imagine my life. Like, I don't know, your your phone, your social media is just such an ingrained part of your life. Just know we're not asking you to give up your phone forever and go back to, like, Nokia, whatever. Like, (laughs) We should, though. Like, we really (laughs) should. I think there actually are phones now that are there are there are I was watching again I was watching a YouTube video right and this guy it was like really into the minimalism lifestyle and he found he there's a whole phone I forgot what it was called it's built for like the minimalist lifestyle and it's a gray screen old school like you can't even do photos and he said it was hard for the first month like really really difficult to get used to and now he's like I never go back I read books again. Wow. I run again. Like we don't realize, truly, I believe, like how the enemy uses the phone and the distraction to keep us so captivated on the wrong things. Yes. And we have, all we need to do is be willing to be aware. It's like, God, lift the veil from my eyes. Help me to see this, to be more aware of what you have for me instead of what the world is distracting me by. Like if you ask him, God will show you. He is not a God of confusion. You will be shown. So just be excited about what he has for you. Like there's no way I could be in the health space that I'm in, the relationship I'm in with my husband now. Like none of that would have been possible with all the ways that I was distracting and self-medicating myself for so many years, right? Like now it's let me, I can still be addictive stuff, but like to the right things, right? Like to God yeah. and to work out into healthy relationships. And so if that's where you find yourself, just ask him, God, what's the first step here? Like, he's not going to give you something you can't handle. And it may look like this long for me, gosh, this was a five, six year journey to today, right? Like what's step one in this Lord? Like, how do you help me be more present? What's the first baby step I can take? Or I'm feeling convicted that I'm not loving how much I'm on my phone or social media, like, Lord, show me that first way or those first few steps that I can take. That's so good. And it reminds me of some conversations I've had. And even when I have felt like my business journey or whatever, like if it's a health journey, whatever, it's so hard to be on social media and not get caught in comparison when you are at the beginning of your process. Or even not, even like far into the process. Yes, because you're always seeing other people's success. You're always seeing people who are later in their process and you feel like, oh my gosh, I, she's so much better than me. She's doing so much better, so much more successful. And so I love how you 
well, two things you mentioned earlier. Number one, the faith aspect of your business, rather than like constantly being on social media, watching other people and feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm not as good. I'm not doing as well. Like you were willing to trust God for the success of your business. Mm -hmm. And then with that, you also mentioned you figured out your like sweet spot, I guess, for lack of a better term, like your people were meeting you on your podcast. So yeah. that released the pressure for you to feel like, oh my gosh, I need to be on Facebook and Instagram and sure. Pinterest and doing a hundred things in order to reach your people. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's always looking at like, how do I, for me, if, if you guys are in the business space or ministry space, like how am I going to create a sustainable business? Sustainability mm -hmm. is key for me. And so I'm looking at like sustainability comes through simplicity. And so where is, where am I going to, what am I going to marry? I'll marry the podcast and I'll mail email marketing. That feels really good. Like I can own these two places. I can connect deeply with people and then we'll supplement with anywhere else that we show up points right back to my house, which is the podcast. So it's like, what is that for you? And ask yourself, can I own this? Do I own this? And then does this feel really great to show up here? And is it blessed by God? And if you can answer those questions with yeses, you're in the right place. And if something is a no, you know, take those journaling steps, those prayerful steps to make some changes and know that it's okay. There's always something better. When something goes away that's not from him, I promise the gift is there. There is something better waiting for you in return that's more peaceful and joyful and fruitful and successful on the other side of that. That's so good. So for those who maybe be who maybe are in the beginning stages of their business or wanting to, you know, like just trust God for whatever he's calling them to, but they are feeling a little bit sucked into the pressures of hustle culture and feeling like they need to do all the things. What would you say to her as far as being willing to trust God for her success? Yeah, I think if you can get into the word, it's so helpful. Like I'll just Google like what by scriptures for success or scriptures for trust. And like, I'll just let God kind of lead me into where he wants me in scripture. And then I'll find one that I know is for me. And I'll just kind of meditate on that and journal on that a little bit. And those moments really help me to connect with God in those areas. And then you have to take the next step, which is the application of what you've learned, right? So it's one thing to be like, okay, you know, we're supposed to trust God and in all our ways, don't lean on ourselves, but, you know, trust on God, that's cool. But like, I'm going to still trust, like you have to actually walk that out. And so journal over that for that day. Like what is one way that I can not trust and lean on my own understanding today, but lean on God's and then challenge yourself to actually take that action. I think where we fail is we come up with this big audacious thing that we have to shift. Like, I'm going to get off social media completely because Steph said, and then like, I'm going to completely trust God with my business. But like, you know, like we go so big without knowing what is the next right step that we either overwhelm ourselves or we fail because our goal was too big. And then we think that we can do none of it. And so I'm constantly telling my students, like, what's the next step? What's the next step? Just look at the next step. Take it. Then you look up. Now what? Next step take it, then look up. When you guys are growing a business, it is a long haul. It is a whole thing. So like, what is the first yes. couple steps for you? And I would tactically speaking, encourage you to figure out what is your house going to be in your new business? Is it going to be video, blogging, or audio? You got to pick one of the long forms. I'm pro, YouTube. I'm pro podcasting. Love it. It's the easiest one to do. It's simple. It's got super high conversion. It's a great way to grow a new audience all over the world with one piece of content or two pieces once, once or twice a week. It's very simple. Obviously, that's what I teach, so I'm very biased. But that's my favorite thing. Like, If you're going to start something, start with that and let that house begin to work for you and kind of like let go of all these other things you think you have to have. Yes, that's so good. And again, going back to that idea of just freedom. I feel like when we are so caught up in the pressures of social media, the last thing we're feeling is free. At least for me, my experience has just been, I feel trapped in this never ending cycle of, 
oh, my content didn't perform. I'm not good enough. Like just a downward spiral that's not doing anything good for us. And so I love that you are proof that you don't have to be glued to your phone in order to be successful in your business or whatever ministry or the life that God is calling you to do. So I know that there's so much more goodness where this came from and we barely scratched the surface, but would you please tell everybody where they can find you, get connected, learn more, listen to your podcast? Yeah, of course. So you guys can come listen to my show. It's called Online Business for Christian Women. And even if you don't have a business, but you have a ministry or you want to start something, that is a great place to go with 700 episodes to support you in that journey. And then my website is stephaniegass.com. That's S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E-G-A-S-S. I have free workshops, free classes, like how does podcasting work to make money online? I have a workshop for that over there. I have a clarity workshop if you want to know what you're called to do and all kinds of other free gifts. Yay. Well, you guys know I'll link everything for you so you can get connected with Steph. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here, for sharing your story, and for helping so many women get free from all those things that are keeping them from what God really has for them. So, so grateful for you. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into another episode of the By Word Show. I love having you here, and I am truly so thankful for your support. Don't forget to share a screenshot of this episode to let me know you were here, and quick favor, if you enjoyed this episode, would you take a second to leave a review? It really helps our community grow. If you want more, you can shop my books, Waking Up and Love Is, at thehannahughes.com or on Amazon. And be sure to join my email list for all the latest news. I can't wait to chat again soon, but in the meantime, be sure to come connect with me on social media, and remember, I'm cheering you on.